The Oakland Raiders banner has proudly flown atop the sports world throughout an historic decade. Since 1963, when Al Davis pledged to build sports' greatest organization, the Raiders have totally dominated football. Only the Super Bowl remained to add to the trophy case, but after 1976, this too would stand tall alongside nine division championships, AFL and AFC championships, 12 consecutive winning seasons, prized symbols of total superiority by the Raiders, pro football's winning esteem. In 1976, the silver and black completed a decade of destiny, adding a crowning glory to their already unrivaled record of excellence. On opening day, the Pittsburgh Steelers found the Raiders long on injuries, short on excuses, primed and ready. Ken Stabler's touchdowns to Dave Casper and Fred Boletnikoff, number 25, helped earn 440 yards against the Steel Curtain. Still, Oakland trailed by 14 with only 535 remaining. Without standout veterans, Art Toms, Horace Jones, Kelvin Corver, Marv Hubbard and others, able coach John Madden's Raiders fought back courageously, defying adversity, time and the Steelers. Dave Casper capped a brilliant drive with a 10-yard score. The aroused defense controlled Pittsburgh, forcing a punt that special team captain Warren Bankston blocked and number 47, Charlie Phillips, fielded. The great Oakland fans had learned to expect heroic rallies from their Raiders. For these wearers of the famed silver and black were veterans of pressure situations, at home with dramatic last-minute victories. Stabler bootleg tying the score at 28 with just 59 seconds left. Then Dave Rowe deflected a pass that linebacker Willie Hall intercepted, bringing on rookie place kicker Fred Steinfort. 1976 began with another remarkable chapter in the history of daring Raider comebacks. Raiders 31, Steelers 28. In Kansas City for a Monday night game, Raider special teams led the charge. Kicker Ray Guy, Neil Colsey, Terry Coons, Jack Tatum, Ted Qualick, Rick Bonas, Mike Ciani, and number 61 Herb McMath relentlessly shadowed the Chiefs. On offense, Mark Van Egan number 30 and Pete Banasak number 40 surged for big yardage. With overpowering protection from offensive captain Gene Upshaw and Art Shell number 78, Stabler coolly completed 22 passes. But in the fourth quarter, Stabler was hobbled after drilling Mike Ciani with a final touchdown in a 24-21 win. Houston gets hot even indoors, but more fired up was a fierce Raider defense that burned the Oilers. Giant newcomers number 72, John Matuzak, and talented rookie Charles Fillyar number 77, products of football's premier scouting operation, were overwhelming. The undefeated Oilers had not yielded a touchdown in 1976, but rookie Mike Ray, playing for Stabler, changed that with scoring passes to Cliff Branch for a 14-13 Oakland triumph. A long Raider trip to New England found the Patriots inhospitable. But one taste of defeat was all this 1976 Oakland Raider team would tolerate. In San Diego, the Chargers challenged for first place. Neil Colsey's punt returns gave Oakland favorable field position.
Then Ken Stabler deftly unfolded the game plan developed by head coach John Madden and skillful offensive assistants Oliver Spencer, Tom Flores, and Lou Erber. Cliff Branch scored from 74 and 41 yards out as Oakland roared back 27 to 17. In Denver, punt coverage taught by special teams coach Joe Scanella and led by Bradshaw and Phillips corralled the Broncos. Van Egan powered toward his thousand yard season. Then Oakland's precision passing finished a successful five week road trip 17 to 10. Home at last, the Raiders hosted Green Bay. A scoreless battle exploded after linebacker Phil Villapiano made a key theft. In the NFL's 57-year history, no team ever had a better pass completion percentage than these 1976 Oakland Raiders. So Ken Stabler quickly went airborne, striking for three scores in nine minutes. This lightning attack included an 88-yard bolt to Cliff Branch, most feared deep receiver in football today. Then a clutch interception by number 26, Skip Thomas, preserved an 18-14 victory. <laughs> Oakland now stood 6-1. and one. When Denver invaded Raider country, Coach Madden's resourceful defensive aides, Tom Doms, Don Schenick, and Bob Zeman, unleashed an awesome pass rush that sacked Bronco quarterbacks 10 times. Behind textbook blocking, Clarence Davis, number 28, went for one score. Then Raider Radio's Bill King described further action in the 19-6 win. Slot left, Raiders third down now, and still Six to go, a deep bomb being thrown to Belitnikoff up the left side, leaping catch, end zone, touchdown Raiders! Then east to Chicago, where Otis Sistrunk, Dave Rowe, and Ted Hendricks chilled NFC rushing leader Walter Payton and the Bears' offense even more than did the winter weather. Despite bitter cold, the Raiders' passing stayed hot. To the right, Stabler back, first down, he's got a pass, he's got time. Throwing the bomb for Branch. Branch down on the 35, takes it in stride, the 30, 40, 10, touchdown Raiders! Though held to under three yards per carry, Payton found the end zone, and the game rocked back and forth. Tough defense made big plays. Assist drunk deflection and Hendrick's interception set up a 28 to 27 Raider lead. Branch to the left, Belitnikoff to the right. Stabler back to pass again from midfield, throwing a deep bomb, going to Branch against Livers. Livers knocks it down. Branch catches it. Touchdown, Raiders. Holy Toledo. John Madden epitomizes coaching greatness. His foresight in taking the wind in the fourth quarter help preserve victory. Huff waits, the snap, the spot, the kick on the way, it's high enough. No good, no good, it hit the right upright. Oh, you know, the Oakland continue to live by the veritable, the terribly 
cliched skins of their collective teeth. Oakland, now 8-1, was home against Kansas City, where Ken Stabler utilized skillful Dave Casper and Fred Beletnikoff for scores as the silver and black thundered toward the playoffs 21-10. In historic Philadelphia, the Raiders rang the bell on defense and offense to give Coach Madden his 80th win and capture their ninth division championship in 10 years, 26 to seven. against Tampa Bay, the Raiders rolled to victory number 11, their sixth in a row. Willie Hall came up with another big play, and the Raiders buried the buck. to Mike Ciani closed out the 49-17 display of Oakland power, prowess, and playoff promise. Then a huge TV audience learned an unforgettable lesson about these mighty Oakland Raiders. By losing, Oakland could deny Pittsburgh the playoffs. But the Raiders know only one way to play, to win. Victory is a way of life for the silver and black. Rick Jennings' kickoff return started it off. The rest was pride and poise, preparation and performance. Here's Branch to the left against Riley, who's five yards off the line. Boletnikov to the right against Parrish. Back to Stabler, pumps once, goes down the middle of Casper, wide open. Touchdown, Raiders! There would be no stopping Oakland now by anyone. These combat-ready Raiders had grown stronger through challenge and adversity. Stabler and Branch flashed from 42 yards out and the critics went silent. Interceptions by Monty Johnson, George Atkinson number 43, and Jack Tatum number 32 destroyed Cincinnati's offense. And then the Raiders calmly shouted Bengal playoff hopes as Stabler and Beletnikov clinched win number 12, 35 to 20. Prior to the Charger game, Ken Stabler was named most inspirational Raider. This final game showcased Mike Ray, Dave Hum, You Begin, Carl Garrett, Manfred Moore, Rodrigo Barnes, Floyd Rice, Steve Sylvester, Henry Lawrence, Dan Medlin, Morris Bradshaw, and others, as Oakland triumphed 24 to nothing, finishing 13 and one, best in football. The Raiders had proved again that commitment to excellence is no idle phrase to dedicated people like Al Davis, courageous general partner Ed McGaugh, players, coaches, scouts, trainers, equipment men, front office personnel, the entire organization, Together, these gallant Raiders and their magnificent fans were now bound for glory. Against the Patriots in the AFC playoff, Stabler received solid protection from Dave Dalby, John Vella, and George Beeler as Oakland marched for an early field goal.
The Raider defense alertly matched razzle-dazzle with readiness and reaction. Trailing 7-3, Oakland forged ahead on this catch by master craftsman Fred Boletnikov. But the Patriots regained the lead 21-10 late in the third quarter. The valiant Raiders stormed goalward in classic drives. First Van Egan scored, but Oakland still trailed by four. Now only four minutes left, 68 yards to go. Now every Raider dug deep for the something extra that marks champions. As the Raider receiver was clobbered even farther downfield, New England was caught belting Stabler in the head. The Raiders relentlessly closed in as the game drew to a dramatic finish. It is second down. Stabler rolling to the left. He's going to go. He wins it in. Penny Stabler put a flag down. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Touchdown indication. Flag down. No final decision yet. Here's the signal coming. Offside New England. Decline open. The AFC Championship. At wide receiver from the University of Colorado, number 21, Cliff Branch. Against Pittsburgh, Ray Guy was fearlessly protected. The Steeler punter was not. And you begin partial block set up a Raider field goal. Then the defense rose up tall. Stallworth to the left, out to the right of Swan, split backs. Brad goes Bradshaw, has got time to throw, a lot of time. He fires one that Fuqua can't hold. It is intercepted by Hall. Hall is up from the 25 to the 20 to the 10. He's being run out of bounds on the three-yard line. Behind devastating blocking, Clarence Davis put the determined Raiders ahead 10 to nothing. The Oakland defense played with controlled fury, growing stronger, tougher. Every play was a challenge to be met and conquered. Raider execution and emotion were at a level Pittsburgh found unstoppable. Stabler play fakes, drops back, here comes a rush, he gets rid of it to Bankston, touchdown Raiders! With Pittsburgh's league-leading defense on the ropes, Coach Madden went for the clincher, ensuring the Raiders' Super Bowl date with destiny. Warren Banks inside. Here's the play fake. Stabler back. Here comes a blitz by him, but he throws. Touchdown, Raiders! Yeah, 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 yeah! Way to go! Yeah. Great throw! Great throw, John! Got him down. Now don't let off. The Raiders never faltered. Number 43, George Atkinson, the NFL's smallest strong safety, played with giant skills and intensity. The Raiders danced deservedly, casting a silver and black shadow across Steeler hopes. No team could deny these Raiders their place in the sun. The Super Bowl really exists for the Oakland Raiders. All along they've been thinking it was somebody's crazy illusion. Ten seconds to go. Eight, seven, six, five, four. The field is being engulfed by humanity. Time is run out. The Oakland Raiders have made it to the Super Bowl. Super Bowl XI, the Oakland Raiders versus the Minnesota Vikings. From the outset for the Oakland Raiders, professional sports outstanding organization, there was never a question about the Super Bowl. This game, this season, this league, this decade belonged to the silver and black. Raider might was undeniable early, 
But Minnesota got life, blocking a punt deep in Oakland territory. But no panic, no break in rate of concentration and intensity. Just stop them now, get the ball back. Packerton gives to McClanahan, Stonewall! There's a scramble, there may have been a fumble! Oakland recovers! Holy Toledo! Then 125 million people saw Clarence Davis follow guard George Beeler left. Behind the blocking artistry of Casper, Shell, Upshaw, Dalby, and Vela, Davis was en route to a 137-yard rushing day. The Raiders drew first blood after Dave Casper's catch was ruled out on an Earl Mann field goal. Next, Oakland boldly drove 64 yards to gain a 10-0 lead. Number 31, Carl Garrett, contributed key yardage. Fred Beletnikoff took the Raiders to the one. Bankston on the right side as a wing back. Stabler back to pass. A quick throw into the end zone. Casper touchdown Raiders. Yasha Heifetz never played a violin with more dexterity than Kenny Stabler is playing the Minnesota Viking defense this afternoon in the Rose Bowl Stadium at Pasadena. The worldwide audience now realized that time alone stood between these Raiders and complete domination of Super Bowl XI. From the one, Pete Banaszak punched it over. Meticulous design coupled with devastating blocking by backs and line alike powered the Raiders down the glory road. In the third quarter, Oakland moved farther ahead, 19 to nothing, with an Earl Mann 40-yard field goal. Magnificent special teams, offense and defense. An electrifying, intimidating force in silver and black that now stands as history's best. In the words of syndicated columnist Jim Murray, these Raiders play football like commandos jumping through skylights with machine guns blazing. <music> Willie Hall intercepted on the Oakland 30. Just four plays and the turnover equal touchdown. The long gainer coming from Stabler to Boletnikov. Pete Banaszak scored again as the Raider assault rolled on relentlessly. Then defensive captain Willie Brown finished the scoring avalanche, 32 to 14. And he looks and throws, intercepted by the Oakland Raiders, Willie Brown at the 30, 40, 50, he's going all the way! Old man Willie, touchdown Raiders! Together with their loyal fans, the Oakland Raiders, number one for so many years, now stand alone as the world champions of professional football, a crowning glory. <laughs>